In this tutorial, we'll look at an introduction to digital certificates. But first, we'll review uh, some encryption techniques that we've learned in our last uh, video. So we've got two types of encryption systems that we can use here. Let's suppose we've got some plain text and we use a key to encrypt it. If we use the same key to decrypt it, this system of encryption and decryption is called symmetric. The key size is fairly small, 256 bits being the, one of the larger ones, and it provides us uh, a level of security for encryption that today can't be broken in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Now one of the problems with this symmetric system is in key distribution, how do we get the keys to both ends? That's solved by a system, a different encryption system. They both are based on, both systems are based on prime numbers and math, but there's a different, uh, a different process used in the public key system. So this is called the public key infrastructure system here, PKI. And it uses two keys. So when we have plain text, we use one key to encrypt, but a different key to decrypt. And the decryption key is your private key. And your encryption key is generally your public key that you distribute. So how this works here is that suppose information is going to come this way. Um, this end user here, they distribute their public key. So out to the world, anyone can get it. And so if this end wants to send communication to this uh, device, they simply use this public key to encrypt the information. The private key is kept secret with this user. When they get the information, they'll use the private key to decrypt. Now, this, these keys are fairly large. They can be as large as 2048 bits. And the encryption is slow. However, this system is used to exchange symmetric keys. So if there is, if I have and have created a symmetric, uh, or want to get a, let's suppose I want to get a symmetric key. So let's suppose there's a symmetric key over here and I want to get it here, I can send my public key. The key itself, which is just a number, can be encrypted, sent to me, and I'm the only one that can decrypt it. Now, both ends here have the same symmetric key and can use a symmetric key uh, session for encryption. Why would we want to do that? Well, because these keys are 256 bits and, and the encryption is very much faster. Fast encode and decode. So we'll use this slower system with larger keys. So here to get the same type of uh, security uh, that we have here with 256 bits, we've got to use maybe up to 2048 bits. So the encryption is very, uh, very slow, but we're only doing that at the beginning of our conversation. So two systems. Now we'll use an example of uh, where uh, encryption is used in digital communications and in particular we'll look at SSL communications which are used between web clients and web servers. Now SSL stands for Secure Sockets Layer. And it is a means of providing encrypted uh, security between a client and a web and you'll notice that you're getting SSL communication in various web browsers when you see uh, this type of indicator. Usually it's a lock. And if I click on there, I can see that what that means is that that's saying I'm connected to this domain and it's being verified by a third party. And you can get more information about what's called the certificate by clicking here. And what that does is it provides trust 
uh, to the end user. Why would we want to do, have trust? Well, uh, from this website I may be purchasing something, so I may be sending my credit card information over there. So I want to trust that that website is going to encrypt the communication, it's not going to be intercepted, and that my credit card information is going to be, um, is going to be uh, secure. So let's look in detail at this idea of a digital certificate. What is it uh, designed to do? So it's an electronic credential. And it's used to uh, assert the online identity of either an individual, usually a company, a computer like a server, any entity, organization that may be using a network that you want to connect to. And typically we're using these for commerce, but digital certificates are used well beyond just SSL use. So they're similar to ID cards like a passport or a driver's license. Now, certificates contain a few things, but at its heart, certificates contain a public key. That's probably the number one uh, most important thing because we want to have um, encrypted communications. Note, they do not include a private key. And they'll list the identity of the owner. Now, digital certificates can offer some further protection or further features, and that is one of trust. So you can have a certificate that is actually that you've obtained or is issued by what is called a certificate authority. And a certificate authority validates the identity of the certificate holder. And if we go back and look at our example, let me bring that up here for a second, you'll notice that Entrust here was the certificate authority that is validating or telling you that you're actually connected to nscc.ca. You're not connected to any hacker site that's going to get your information. Now, you can have self-signed certificates, and we'll look at this in a bit. And a self-signed certificate is uh, a case where you build your own server and you put up a website and built into that feature is the ability to create a certificate. Now, you, if you want to use SSL communications, you have to have a certificate. That's part of the mechanism built into using SSL. So you can just generate your own certificate and you can say, hey, I'm uh, um, John Smith and my organization is the Acme Corporation. You can put that on the certificate, but you have no one validating that. So, but that's called a self signed certificate. So let's look in detail about this idea of a certificate authority because generally we want to make sure certificates are, uh, are, are that we're going to trust these certificates. So how does a user generate uh, or get a certificate? Well, a user first has to make sure they've generated their two keys, their private key and their public key, uh, because they're going to use the PKI infrastructure as part of how certificates are generally, um, are generally used in secure communications. They're going to then provide some user identification information, your um, your address, uh, what type of business you're in, and they're going to make a request to a certificate authority. There are many of them. We talked about Entrust there. So that's going to go to a certificate authority, and they're going to verify and validate the user identification. That may even be phone calls, maybe visits or whatever. And they're going to build a certificate for that user. Now they're going to charge a fee for that as well. But what they're going to do is they're going to give you a file that will be your digital certificate. And on that file, or your certificate, will be your public key, information on the certificate authority here. If we used Entrust, that information would be uh, in the certificate. And then information on who's holding the certificate. So in our example there, it was nscc.ca. 
because we were connecting to their site. In that example, we were connecting to a, a mail site. And we return this certificate to the user for use in their company's uh, website. Now, how do we, if we go back, how do we, um, how do we generate uh, this request to the certificate authority? So if we look at a, what's called a certificate signing request, a CSR, how do we generate that? Well, what happens is we can use actually uh, a command that comes with many uh, web servers. Many web servers use uh, an open source program uh, for generating web, uh, creating a web server. Apache is one of the common ones. And one of the uh, programs that are typically used is something called OpenSSL along with Apache. And OpenSSL is an open source uh, standard uh, piece of software and it's designed for implementing the SSL or encryption communication that will go between the web server, say an Apache web server, and a client. And you can use one of these commands here uh, to actually generate uh, your public key and private key and make the certificate a signing request. And that will eventually go to a certificate authority. So who are some of the major players in the certificate authority game? You can see you have Komodo, probably the largest one, Semantic, GoDaddy, uh, and so on. If you want to, these certificates have to be purchased, and you'll notice that uh, this is Semantic's website, and they have a lot of different features. So you can get certificates with various levels of encryption security and some other features, and cost quite a bit. So you've got uh, about $1,500 uh, US here. If you get a basic one, you can pay as little as 300 but there are certainly uh, a few hundred dollars to several hundreds of dollars uh, for an SSL certificate. Hence the, need, the reason why not all certificates come from a certificate authority. So we're going to take another look at this self-signed certificate. Well, the SSL certificate, the number one feature of it, is it provides encryption. So that's the number one uh, reason for it. So it doesn't matter whether it's self-signed or comes from a CA, any certificate will provide encryption uh, using a public key. The trust issue is why you use a certificate with a CA. Because if you use a self-signed certificate, you are prone to something called a man-in-the-middle attack. So let's look here. We've got our client, and we've got our web server here. And ideally, that simply connects to the web server, and it's going to use the certificates. Actually, the certificate is going to be sent back, information in the cert and they're going to have an encrypted communication. So whether this certificate is self-signed or not, everything's going to work fine. However, there's a few things that can happen if you use a self-signed certificate. It could be that a hacker has gotten somewhere in the middle here. This could be the internet, it could be uh, a small business, like an internet cafe, but somehow you have got an evil presence here and when you make a request that you think you're making to this website it's actually going here. Now what's happening because you're using a self-signed certificate that self-signed certificate is coming now from this evil entity. Because you're using a self-signed certificate you really don't know uh, you don't have any trust in the certificate. The certificate will say it's coming from maybe this, well, you were trying to connect to the Acme Corporation to buy something online. So this certificate mimics that certificate and says, hey, I'm the Acme Corporation and here's my certificate. 
you'll do encrypted communication, but now between the evil entity and so all your credit card information will be decoded because you're now using the public key of this entity. So when that happens, that's called a man-in-the-middle attack. Now, sometimes you need to use self-signed certificates. You're doing some testing in a lab um, and you want to test a website, so you simply make a self-signed certificate. Um, most web servers have the ability to do something else which is a little more secure, and that is you can actually set up a little uh, certificate authority on your own internal businesses um, um, in your organization's web server. And it will be self-signed, but what, you, what this does is this creates a root certificate. And if you can go to all the machines in your organization and install this root certificate, what will happen is uh, all those machines will be able to validate that it came from this machine. So you're far less prone to a man-in-the-middle attack. Now this is more work. So self-signed certificates are out there. How do you recognize that you've gotten a self-signed certificate? Well, if you browse to a website and you get a little pop-up from your browser and says, this site is not trusted, do you want to continue? Okay, well, if you continue, there's nothing validating that you're on the site that you think you're on. Some small businesses actually do this because they don't want the expense of, the, of getting a certificate. However, this, you should not give this website any private information uh, whatsoever. So you can have self-signed certificates. They're great uh, in educational use. We want to build a server very quickly. We want to uh, test it out with some clients. We're in a pretty secure environment. Everything is, um, everything is just sort of temporary. We're not doing any private uh, information exchange. And so you'll sometimes see self-signed certificates. Okay, so let's look at how this process uh, actually works with the certificate with a web browser and a web server. So there are four steps here. I'm going to add step zero as the initialization step because I have a web browser and it's going to say, hmm, I want to go to nscc.ca and get my webmail. So it's going to say HTTPS and it's going to use the webmail address nscc.ca and it's going to want to connect. So my first request is to the web server saying I want to use SSL communication uh, and attach to you to send uh, private information. So when that request comes in the first thing that's going to happen is the web server and the browser need to set up some way to communicate in an encrypted fashion. So they both need the same key and because they're going to use symmetric encryption uh, system. But how do they get that key? Okay, so what happens is this web server says, okay, um, I'm going to send you my public key across the web browser. Now the web browser here, it creates this symmetric key. And now it has a way to get it back to the web server because it's going to use the public key that was sent across. It's going to use this public key that was sent across, so this has got a public key. And we'll use a slightly different, maybe this is its bad color. Maybe this is the private key. So it sends the public key across in the certificate because the certificate goes across and the web browser looks at the certificate, it says, ah, okay, you are nscc.ca, so it looks at the trust 
Uh, maybe that certificate has been validated by a CA, so you'll see the N-Trust or the CA's information. So your browser, built into your browser, are a list of all the CAs that are trusted, and N-Trust is one of them that's actually built into the browser. So that big CA list of all the CAs in the world that it trusts. If it's not in the web browser's uh, software, you're going to get that little message of this is not a secure site uh, type of thing. Um, with this public key, it's going to encrypt this um, symmetric key for its session, and it sends that symmetric key, encrypt it. It's going to be sent across, but it's going to be encrypted with this. Let me just put this with this public key here at the web server. The web server now applies its private key to that package, and it doesn't matter if this key information is intercepted, no one can decrypt it and get the uh, our symmetric key. So it's going to decrypt it, and now we have, on both ends, we now have the same symmetric key. Now that we have a symmetric key, we can encrypt information end-to-end -end and we can encrypt it very quickly. And so information flows back and forth and the encryption process is very fast. So that's the use of certificates. That's why they're important. That's uh, uh, and all uh, e-commerce sites that are on the internet will have a uh, certificate, digital certificate, an SSL certificate that is validated uh, by an external uh, certificate authority.